So hi, today uh, we will talk about a few uh, converter topologies. You know, those are uh, mostly used for uh, really high uh, power applications. So, you know, can you can you suggest a name for this uh, rectifier? So basically, it can be uh, quite strange at the moment. But in the primary side, we have a Y uh, transformer. But on the secondary side, basically there are uh, six secondaries. You know, all of them are phase shifted, and I will uh, show you more slides for that one. And each of each of those legs are, you know, 60 degrees shifted, and it looks like a it looks like a, a half bridge rectifier, but not three phases, but uh, six phases. So this is exactly, you know, what does it look like? You know, you can either have you can either have a full bridge uh, three phase rectifier. Let me change this color. So either you can have a three phase full bridge rectifier. I mean, remember that one, like you can have the diodes here, right? And we were giving like uh, three phases here. But if you look at that voltage, there were six different uh, possibilities. So it is like VAB, VBC, VCA, and after that you can have VBA, VCB, VAC. So there were basically uh, six different uh, combinations for the output voltage. Here it is exactly the same. The only difference is uh, you have like 60 degrees differences between all those phases and if you look at the, the output voltage it will be identical to that one where you have you know at, if it is a 50 hertz uh, grid you have 300 hertz uh, output voltage but again here we have the same problem i mean the same problem with the half bridge rectifiers here you know it can be diodes or uh, thyristors but you can only draw uh, current from one side so you you are forcing to have some DC current from the transformer, you know, which is not uh, desired. So, and then you know that thing is called you know six pulse rectifier, and again that can be called as like three phase full bridge rectifier, but in some sources they also say it's a six pulse rectifier because in one you know full cycle there are like six pulses. So let's uh, move on from that. Uh, topology to that one again this uh, seems uh, quite strange at I mean to start it we have not uh, six diodes or thyristors but we have 12 of those things and on the, the source side okay the source side is not just a three phase uh, I mean of course here is like it is three phase here but on the transformer side you don't have a y to y transformer you don't have a y to delta transformer but you have two secondaries connected in different and if you remember it from uh, last year you know connecting a transformer in y or delta creates a you know phase shift of 30 degrees so even if let's say you know the turns ratios are adjusted to have the same magnitude the phases of that phase and that phase are not identical there is a phase difference and if you adjust those things so that is a basically a simple way to get a six phase uh, voltage from a three phase uh, grid okay so you are using three phase and I will show you a couple of slides and you are moving those uh, phases and it is as if your converter is connected to a six phase uh, voltage source so again, you know, here you have that conversion, and if you looked at the output, you will not you will not see like six pulse, but instead you will see a much you know finer pulses, which is like twelve pulse. So each of those things will be uh, thirty degrees. So I mean, you can imagine you know what we, what happened from a you know single phase rectifier to three phase rectifier the output voltage becomes much uh, smoother 
and here it is happening again so instead of using uh, six pulse we are using uh, 12 pulses I will I will show a couple of uh, slides so I mean this is again uh, called uh, 12 pulse rectifier and if you are you know more interested in those things you know I suggest you to read uh, the Lander's book power electronics uh, section 2.9 which is also in the link is in the references in the course web page okay so I mean here let's look at the, the transformer side I mean here you know they can all share the same transformer like a three-phase transformer where we have the primaries, primaries and secondaries but there are two secondaries but the electrical connection of the secondaries are adjusted for you know one set of secondaries as y and the other one connected as delta okay so this is there's a two secondary winding and that kind of transformers i believe uh, you will see in in some other practical applications as well so they are called phase shifting uh, transformers and actually there's even more you know you can obtain you know 24 pulse or 48 pulse okay so you have a three phase voltage and you want to get uh, maybe six phase input or maybe 12 uh, phase voltage okay and the method i mean as i mentioned they are obtained by phase shifting uh, transformers so the idea you know i just showed you if you connect a y connection then you can have that kind of uh, phaser however if you connect let's say uh, delta you will have a phase shifting in your phasers okay and if you adjust those phase shifters and number of turns it is possible to have equal voltages uh, with 60 degrees apart or uh, 30 degrees apart depending on your topology okay so this is a way to obtain a uh, six phase source another interesting thing and if you look at the output voltage here okay if you look at the output voltage here you will see it is not directly the output voltage of that one actually if you just look at that part okay if you just look at that part i mean it is identical that part is identical right here this is a three phase full bridge rectifier so what you are doing is you are phase shifting it okay then on the top side you have another uh, three phase full bridge rectifier okay and it is as if you connected them in series okay you have some voltage here and you have some voltage here and then you are connecting them in series and there's a phase shift i mean there's a phase shift between those voltages so let me try to plot it here so one of them is like that right uh, of course like this is uh, let's say this is not the full cycle this is pi and the next one let's say it is shifted it is shifted like that okay and you add these two voltages in series so in that way you can have a higher voltage you can have a higher voltage okay i mean and the interesting is for example you can have a higher voltage while using a lower voltage uh, semiconductors lower voltage uh, diodes so for example if that uh, diode can withstand i don't know thousand volts i mean you can have a couple of series connections in parallel and in the output you can have 2000 volts you know while uh, keeping the rated voltage of your diodes uh, still small and another thing as you can see here is because of the phase shifting you know those maximum and minimum points doesn't overlap so they actually filter you know each other and the output voltage becomes a much smoother voltage because at that point uh, the other one has its maximum value the other one has its minimum value 
so in the overall you get a filtered uh, waveform and that reduces uh, the you know the ripple at the output or if you need to connect some kind of uh, capacitors you know the size of the capacitors uh, can be reduced and actually there are you know even much extreme uh, topologies like that so and one of the most common uh, uses for you know that kind of multiple uh, pulse rectifiers I mean this is a 12 pulse rectifier is high voltage DC applications where you need to convert AC you know to DC and then you have the high voltage DC transmission I will show you a couple of slides then after that you know this can be maybe thousand uh, kilometer line okay then after that you need to convert uh, DC to AC again and here you will have your three phase grid and you will have your you know three phase grid so and when you are talking about high voltage DC systems we are talking about hundreds of thousands of volts okay even a million volts and there are even a million volt systems but the difficulty is you know you need to have some kind of semiconductors here but there are not any you know semiconductors which can withstand you know hundred thousand volts so the idea is the idea is you can connect that topology to connect you know some kind of three phase uh, full bridge rectifiers in series and on top of that it is also possible to use you know just instead of using one thyristor here you, they are called thyristor valve and thyristor valve is a you know device which you physically get you know many thyristors in series so each of these thyristors are like a uh, thousand volts let's say if they are thousand volts rated maybe you connect 10 of them in series and you get a 10,000 volt uh, semiconductor device so you know it's a nice trick uh, to have that kind of applications so if you you know if you go just go back and if you just uh, plot that waveform what you will obtain you know it is again why it is called a uh, 12 pulse rectifier so in the previous case let me try to find the color uh, in a three phase system full bridge system it was like that and it was you know going down to that value so this is the ripple in a three phase uh, full bridge rectifier however with the you know uh, 12 pulse you know each of those things are now uh, 30 degrees okay and you can see the output voltage is much smoother because you are just staying at the top of that waveform for a really short amount of time and that reduces our ripple voltage uh, quite a lot okay and actually if you look at the input current okay if you look at the input current it is also uh, quite Good. I mean, just to remind you, for a you know three-phase system, it was something like that. Uh, again, it was like 120 degrees, and it was uh, 60 degrees off, and it is much you know from the THD point of view, it was much better than a single phase. This is single phase current. This is three phase uh, current. So, from the uh, input current waveform, you know, this gets closer to a sinusoid. And actually, if you move from uh, six, three phase to six phase or uh, 12 phase, it will get a much nicer waveform. Okay, so I'm, I'm leaving it as an exercise to you. And depending on which uh, topology, uh, which device are working, you know you are not getting a single uh, step at first but our phase currents are divided into many steps so if you remember from uh, machinery in the second semester it really looks like the MMF waveform uh, of an electrical machine because we once we use distributed uh, coil 
so the MMF is not created directly from one phase but all of them are added or subtracted so you have that uh, stepped uh, waveform and it is you know it is easy to see you know it's much uh, closer to a sinusoidal distribution and THD of that waveform uh, will be much lower okay so what about harmonics so again in a six pulse or three phase you know it's either called three phase full bridge rectifier or a six pulse rectifier and six pulse means in one full cycle you have six of those uh, peaks and in 12 pulse you have 12 of uh, these uh, peaks anyway so in the six pulse rectifier we had the fifth and seventh harmonics and we didn't have uh, no triple harmonics in the current and we derived uh, those things and actually on the 12th pulse I'm talking about current on the 12th pulse rectifier uh, the current harmonics are at the 11th and 13th harmonics and the generals again I'm not uh, proving that one but the generalized uh, equation for that one is you know n times 12 plus minus uh, 1 is the harmonic order so whenever it is 6 pulse it is uh, 6 plus minus 1 harmonics or 12 and uh, 12 plus minus uh, 1 harmonics anyway if you go to 18 pulse then it becomes uh, 17 and 19 this is the first harmonic so you don't have any you know third harmonic fifth harmonic seventh harmonic so the frequency of the of the first harmonic gets higher and higher and remember it is easier easier to filter uh, higher harmonic components and actually if you go to 12 24 pulse uh, rectifier it even gets to higher harmonics you have 23rd and 25th uh, harmonics okay so here there's a comparison uh, between uh, the you know the harmonics and also the THD levels let's uh, focus on the THD level so if you have a six pulse rectifier without line reactors so without line reactor means you have a direct uh, connection to your grid which is the ideal case and your current waveforms your current waveforms are more or less uh, like that right so in that one you know you have a quite high uh, THD and again with the stiff source it is uh, quite high and if you have just a uh, two three percent line reactor then your THD reduces I mean you can imagine that one if you have some kind of uh, in uh, commutation period I mean one advantage of that thing is your you know your uh, current waveform is not that steep anymore but it just you know rounded on the corners and it just reduces the THD and let's have a look at you know this is with the six pass with five percent line reactor I mean if it's too small let me write those things 32.9 percent and if you go to uh, six pulse with line harmonic filter so you add extra filters uh, to the grid or source site so with the filter 4.9 percent THD but with the you know added cost of a filter however if you move to 12 pulse rectifier this is 12 pulse this is 18 pulse okay if you move to 12 pulse so the harmonics THD reduces to 8.8 percent .8%, and if you go to 18 pulse it even moves down to 3.9 percent so it just you know you don't have to use a filter and you obtain a much uh, much uh, sinusoidal current waveform and you know I mentioned those are uh, commonly used in high voltage DC rectifiers so let me show you a photo I mean for scale here you see a worker here and all those things you know this is from ABB and you know this is where you know all three phases are coming and all that things are probably series connected you know tire stir banks probably there are a couple of parallel connections as well to divide the current and they are connected in parallel to divide the current and they are connected in series uh, to increase the voltage rating of the device and the voltage rating of that system is 
350 kilovolts. Okay, and it is fed using a 12 pulse thyristor uh, converter. Okay, and it's uh, supplying uh, two big islands of New Zealand, so they are connected uh, by uh, 8 volt HVDC uh, system. And especially if you are laying uh, offshore cables, if you are putting cables under the sea, you know. HVDC becomes uh, more feasible both economically and technically uh, because of uh, the electric constant of the you know seawater is is affecting your power carrying capacity and the second thing is in the HVDC you are laying two cables you know which is cheaper than laying uh, three cables so they also call the HVDC as the revenge of Edison okay because you know Tesla was proposed to use AC you know because in that time they didn't know any semiconductors and it was really inefficient to transmit uh, power using DC at lower voltages but with the transformers they made it possible to increase and uh, the Tesla proposed uh, to increase the voltage to you know minimize the transmission losses but nowadays we have now you know the option to amplify the DC voltages as well and with the use of semiconductors, basically uh, HVDCs, there are some cases HVDC systems are both more efficient and more economical uh, compared to other systems. And actually, and this is the system, this is the same system on the schematic. So you have a 220 kilovolts AC system here, and you have 220 kilovolts AC system here. So you have two you know again phase shifting transformers so this is y and delta connected so they are connected in series they are connected in series as well so they are like four series systems and that system is 350 kilovolt dc and they are carried by 40 kilometers i think there are two parallel cables and each of them is capable of carrying 700 you know seven hundred megawatts so it is quite a large system and on the other side you have other uh, thyristor systems and from dc now you convert it to you know ac and then that is how you connect the two islands of uh, new zealand so actually the you know hvdc systems are uh, becoming more and more popular and india and china are getting you know most of the projects those days because you know you have to uh, transmit power both in China and in India over long distances and I think in Turkey I think if you remember from last year so we have like large hydroelectric dams in the southeast part of Turkey like Keban Atatürk and we are trying to transmit it to Istanbul so we have a diagonal line so it is a similar uh, thing in uh, China so they have like the you know Himalayas and large rivers so they have large uh, hydroelectric dams at you know those parts but their you know biggest cities are in the coastline they have Shanghai Pe Beijing and Hong Kong you know that kind of all large cities on, are on the east part of the China so they have to transmit power you know through you know west to east so and we are talking about really large distances and again i think on the shore i think on shore for distances larger than 1000 to 2000 kilometers or for offshore under sea if the distance is i think just larger than 8 to 100 kilometer okay so for those conditions hvdc is more feasible okay so you know here you know there are some you know previously made ac lines so the red and the i think blue one are the ac systems but the new you know the orange ones are the operating uh, hvdc lines and the light blue ones are the maybe they already finished so they are uh, under construction so i i, I advise you to have a look at uh, those uh, videos to have a better understanding of uh, those systems okay so it is even more possible you know to 
uh, create more pu um, pulses and reduce the output triple you know just as an exercise uh, here you see a 24 pulse system so you have one transformer here so it has you know either uh, two primaries and four secondaries so one of them is like uh, shifted like uh, 15 degrees the other one is uh, 10 degrees 15 degrees and in order to have that kind of intermittent uh, voltage phases what you can do is you can have one phaser like that phase a let's say you have other uh, phase b okay if you i'm talking about the transformer i mean if you add these two if you add these two okay yes you obtain a line to line voltage okay and there will be like 30 degrees difference but for example if i adjust the number of turns of the secondary okay if i just choose a different secondary number of turns so it will be a smaller voltage and if you combine that line to line voltage actually by controlling that magnitude i can adjust like each specific angle you know between those things and actually that is how you obtain uh, angles like uh, 15 degrees and that kind of uh, transformers in phase shifting uh, transforms they are also called zigzag uh, zig zigzag transformers okay and again it is even possible to have 48 pulse so you always have three phase as the source but here it is as if you have a 24 uh, phase uh, system and you have all different combinations of uh, star delta you know delta y y delta 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 with different number of turns and phases so in the overall you have one two three four five six seven eight you know systems in series and because of it is 48 pulse you know the ripples and the frequency bandwidth will be even higher okay so that's all uh, for this video